Alright friends, uh, those of you watching on the uh, one camera are going to see me talking to you right now. <laughs> and you're going to have to just let me talk to you for a second because I'm about to go live. And there's no way for me to sync both cameras at one time. We're live. Yes, we are live. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com live. It is 528, 2013, 406 in the morning, long before Rush Limbaugh is out of bed. You are getting live coverage on TheMediaSpeaks.com. For my regular viewers, fear not, the correct views is being posted, as always, right on the site. Alright guys, here we go. I'm going to launch right into the news. This is Daily Herald. Warning lands, but TV a teacher in a hot water. Basically, what I'm going to go into the story in a minute, but what this teacher did, he should be praised for. They had just done a, a study on the Bill of Rights in his classroom. The school system decided in the best interest of the children, you know that's always bad, due to past suicides and various drug issues, that they were going to have the students sign their name on this thing that asks them whether or not they had done drugs or had sex or did whatever is supposed to be so detrimental to children these days. Um, with their name on it, and turn it in. This teacher, God bless him, informed the students that America, remember, they were studying the Bill of Rights. You do have, in fact, a Fifth Amendment to not incriminate yourself. And he is now in, as they say, very hot water over it. And we're going to go into that story right now. A Batavia high school teacher's fans are rallying to support him as he faces possible discipline for advising students of their constitutional rights before taking a school survey on their behavior. They've been collecting signatures on an online petition, passing the word on Facebook, sending letters to the school board, and planning to speak at Tuesday's school board meeting. God bless them. Students and parents have praised his ability to interest reluctant students in history and current affairs. And I will say, as someone who rotted in the public school system myself, anything that can let students know the importance of our rights is wonderful. Because the way that it was taught to me when I was in school, I foolishly thought that history was dull. I have since become like the World War II uh, brainchild of my generation. I, I studied a lot and uh, I wish it had been presented to me as something of interest. A shout out to Mrs. Jones and Mr. Patton if they're still alive, two history teachers that showed me the error of my ways. Um, John Dryden said he's a uh, said he's not the point. He wants people to focus on the issue he raised, whether school officials considered that, that students could incriminate themselves with their answers to the survey that included questions about drug and alcohol use. He let them know that you do not have to answer these questions if these questions may, in fact, tie a rope around your neck. The man should be being praised. What the hell is wrong with you, people? Dryden, a social studies teacher, told some of his students April 18th that they had a Fifth Amendment right to not incriminate themselves by answering questions on the survey, which had each student's name printed on it. And let's face it, in the age of Lady Gaga and Usher, your average student is an idiot. So thank God for teachers like him that are letting them know that you don't have to to hang yourself on a rope that has your name on it when they're asking you questions. And it gets into it right here. It says that uh, it was actually meant to be for the benefit of the students. Because after all, they could be at risk and only we can help them. 
This is an excuse to get students used to signing their name onto things that people in higher authority can give. Let me tell you what this is about. This is about child protective services. Finding out that your kid has a problem and taking your kid away from you. You teachers need, as this guy said, they, they put it in his mailbox, his to-do box, the day that he was to administer. So there was no time for him to ask any questions. By the time third period, third block, it says roll around, he had gone ahead and actually uh, mandated the test. The point is, he did exactly the right thing. Do we want students to be so stupid that their name can be on top of something that could incriminate them, possibly take them away from their parents in the Gestapo society that we have in America today? Or do we want a teacher that lets them know, hey, you might not want to rat yourself out. You do have a Fifth Amendment right in this country. And don't give me this bullshit that because they're under the 18, under the age of 18, they don't have any rights. Because you are under the age of 18 means you need to be taught that you do have rights. Um, and this I had to get to, and this is from Infowars.com. Ron Paul, Common Core nationalizes and dumbs down public school curriculum. I had debated whether to talk on this or not, but in light of this, uh, this one sentence that's in this, I'm going to do it. In addition to shedding civil liberties, launching a utopian global war for democracy, and going on a spending spree that would make Lyndon B. Johnson blush, the so-called conservative Bush administration dramatically increased federal control over education via the No Child Left Behind Act. During my time in Congress, again, this is the hero, Ron Paul, I heard nothing but complaints about this law from teachers, administrators, and most important, students and parents. Most of the complaints concerned the No Child Left Behind's testing requirements, which encouraged teachers to teach to the test. Well, basically, for those of you that don't know, George Bush ushered in a turd of legislation called No Child Left Behind, and it had a series of tests that teachers were supposed to teach too, and the children would then be able to grow in knowledge because they passed this great test. Well, now, Common Core is a new curriculum, it says, developed by a panel of so-called education experts. The administration is trying to turn Common Core into a national curriculum by offering states increased federal education funding if they impose Common Core's curriculum on the public schools. This is yet another example, Ron Paul writes, of the government using money stolen from the people to bribe states into obeying federal dictates. Now this is why this story mattered to me. Critics of Common Core say it dumbs down education by replacing traditional English literature with informational texts. Dear God in heaven, tell me this is not the case. I, I heard a study that said that uh, Americans on average read at a ninth grade level. Congress speaks at a tenth grade level. That is utter BS right out the door because modern generations have dumbed down at the ninth grade reading level to where it's what a sixth grade level used to be. So if you take, I'm 40, when I was growing up, you take what I was going in school and what I had to pass in order to be a sixth grader, that's what people now have in order to pass the ninth. So we have a general population that reads at like a 6th grade level, at least if uh, you've been tested and you're over the age of 25. So what we're looking at now is taking away English literature. To, to, to students will read such inspiring materials as the studies of Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco instead of English Lit. The EPA's recommended levels of insulation and invasive plant inventory by California's invasive plant control, uh, they are giving them things to further dumb them down and replacing English literature to do it. The other day, uh, Christel and I went to a, a hotel called the Hotel Breakers, and I was 
I didn't want to say that I was checking in uh, to the guard at the door because I wasn't. I was inquiring about using their Wi-Fi since I am a platinum pass holder at the amusement park that is adjacent to the hotel. I said to the guy at the, at the gate, the security officer, I'm going to the breakers to inquire. I'm going to, I'm going to inquire at the breakers, my bad. I'm going to inquire at the breakers. I was looking at my pass in case he asked for it as a, uh, like again, it's an amusement park. Um, Christel said he did one of these. Okay, go ahead. He had absolutely no idea what I am going to inquire at the breakers meant. Now, I worded it that way because I can't say I'm going to check in. I was, and I don't lie, because I have to. Um, I'm going to inquire within is considered rocket scientist in this day and age, and yet these idiots want to take away traditional English literature so they can read an EPA recommendation! That means we're going to have more Usher fans and Fallout Boy fans. What I mean is other idiots in our future! Oh my god, Obama is the worst president in American history. Guys, I got another story for you real quick, uh, and this goes under the Sam is usually, almost always, don't question him right category. I had said that Bitcoin was going to go through the roof, and then that day it fell, and I said the only reason it was going to fall is if it was manipulated by other outside sources, and even then, which is happening, even then, and now, I encourage you to buy Bitcoins as a prep product. Now, uh, if you're not a prepper, should you buy Bitcoin? Probably not at this time. But when, and, and I'm not saying if, I'm saying when, the economic collapse finally hits us in the ass, you who own Bitcoins are going to be able to still purchase things. And if you don't believe me, just ask the average person of Cyprus. Because when the uh, central banks and the big banks took all of their money, the only people that were able to buy anything were people that had bitcoins. So I am not saying that bitcoin is dead. It is not dead. And if you think so, you're a fool. However, it is being manipulated and brought down by uh, the higher ups. And that's the only reason that it's not still selling at $260 a coin. Listen to this. St. Louis, May 17th, U.S. authorities have seized two accounts linked to a major operator in the booming Bitcoin digital currency market, just as the correct views predicted because he's almost always right. Tokyo-based exchange Mt. Gox, GOX. The move may prevent the firm from facilitating the purchase and sale of Bitcoins in U.S. dollars at a time when U.S. when use of, excuse me, of the currency and its value has mushroomed. In other words, this undermines the Fed and they are doing everything they can through their octopus tentacles and every way they can possibly reach in, ruin Bitcoin and make it look like the Fed didn't do it. Bitcoin, which unlike conventional money, is bought and sold on peer-to-peer -peer network independent of any central authority, God bless it, has grown popular among users who lack faith in established banking system, that would be me. The price of the volatile currency ballooned in March as a result of the Cyprus bank crisis. Authorities worry that a lack of regulation has left the currency vulnerable to money launderers and other criminals. The only criminals here are the people that are destroying the free market by limiting the power of Bitcoin. A seizure warrant obtained Tuesday by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security froze an account that an Iowa-based online payment processor, Dwala Inc., D-W-R-L-L-A, held at Viridian Credit Union, V-E-R-I-D-I-A-N, in the name of Mutam Sigalum, LLC. An affidavit filed by an agent with the department's investigation unit states that Mutam Sigalum, a Mt. Gox subsidiary, incorporated in Delaware, was operating as an unlicensed money transmitter in violation of federal law. Treasury's anti-money laundering unit, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, who are in fact themselves usually criminals, in March issued guidance that dubbed digital currency exchanges money transmitters a finding that obliged such businesses to registers 
FIN CEN and obtain any mandated state licenses. And it goes on with a lot of uh, technical speak. In a nutshell, here's what you want to do. If you're looking to make money fast, it's probably not a great idea to buy Bitcoin right now. But if you're looking for something that is going to hold up for as long as the internet works, you're going to want to buy Bitcoin. Do not listen to the authorities on this. They are wrong. You want the correct views? You want to tune in for the correct views? That's the correct view. Uh, the reason I haven't bought them personally and I have tried ad nauseum is, and this is my complaint with Bitcoin, if you don't already have a bank, then it makes it very hard to buy Bitcoins because these jerks don't take credit cards. Well, if you're buying Bitcoin, you already don't trust banks, so they've kind of shot themselves in the foot there. And I predicted this too, when Bitcoin goes under, it's going to be because they're almost impossible to purchase for the average person who doesn't have a credit card and doesn't trust banks, which is me. Uh, guys, I want to give a shout out real quick to the sponsor of uh, the Media Speaks, Nitro Slash Pack. Go on the mediaspeaks.com and .com, click on the Nitro Pack link and check out what they've got. I mean, they've got everything here. Oxy Stable Water Preserver, normally $22, $12.99. Uh, Mountain House Dinner Entrees, $895, $896 for you major preppers out there, normally $1,195. Uh, for those of you going camping, maybe you you know you don't know how much water you have, and we want to drink water out of a stream. Everyone knows that'll kill you. Get the life straw. Twenty four ninety nine. Nope, they got it for sixteen ninety six. Guys, go to themediaspeaks.com and click on the Nitro Pack link and enjoy. We've got two bits of news here, real quick, for you from the potheads. It's not from the potheads, I guess it's for the potheads. Uh, very rarely do you get good news, you're going to get it twice in a row right here. Uh, this is from Tokesignals.com. Pot smoking not linked to breathing problems and may help your lungs. 20 years study, 20 freaking years, that's two decades for you Lady Gaga fans. 20 years study found no decline in lung function for occasional cannabis smokers. Lung function of most marijuana smokers improves over time. How many of you went through the public school system and you were taught that marijuana caused lung cancer? How many of you were lied to? Often when people hear about the studies which have shown that smoking marijuana doesn't cause lung cancer, they'll say something along the lines of, and it says, quote, well, inhaling any smoke cancer or not, is bound to cause some breathing problems. Guess what? It doesn't do either. Thank you. A report published last year in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows that over a 20-year period, marijuana smokers generally did not experience a loss in lung function. In fact, many actually had enhanced lung capability with one researcher speculated it might come from the practice of deep lugging hits which maximize their intoxicating effects. <sighs> Whatever the cause, the fact remains that the study showed the lung function of most marijuana smokers actually improved slightly <sighs> over time. So now we have no cancer link and we have increased lung capabilities. Um, a researcher said this lung stretching property of cannabis may be due to the way that people smoke marijuana by taking and holding deep breath with smoke than it does any actual benefit. I am inclined to believe to that. It also said tobacco is another story. Tobacco has proven to be even more carcinogenic than we have already feared. Um, I want to go to this from the Guardian.co.uk. Cheech and Chong star claims cannabis helps cure prostate cancer. This is more good news on the correct views. Tommy Chong, a veteran of the dope fuel Cheech and Chong film, says that he has beaten prostate cancer, and for you Usher fans, that is prostates of the cojones, with a combination of cannabis use and a special diet. Both. Chong, 74, was diagnosed with cancer in June last year following a three-year period in which he said that he had been drug-free. He now says he is 99% free of the disease after a Canadian doctor helped him change his diet 
to include a variety of special supplements, I wish they had listed them, as well as hemp oil. He then sat for a number of sessions with the practitioner named Adam Dream Healer, described as a world-renowned healer. And looks like he lived up to that. That's right, I kicked cancer's ass, Sean wrote on the website celebstoner.com. Some of the magic plant does cure cancer with the right diet and supplements. I'm due for another blood test, MRI, etc., but I feel the best that I've felt in years. And now for a celebration joint of the finest koosh! That is excellent news. Don't forget, go to the uh, type in mediaspeaks.com hemp oil girl. Uh, this is a girl that is documented to be curing brain cancer with hemp oil. Check it out. Last thing I want to get to, more bad news for my beautiful girlfriend. Uh, she plugs her ears and doesn't want to hear it. Soda addiction as bad for your teeth as meth or crack, according to this study. You know what? My girlfriend has non-stop problems with tender teeth. She, prior to like four days ago, she's on another, I'm going to quit, I swear. And she drinks pop like a fish lives in water, okay? And she's had non-stop tooth trouble, so do me a favor, friends, and pay attention to this. Because this might be why. Bad news, even Diet Coke junkies, yep. Gulping down excessive amounts of soda is no longer just bad for your teeth. And now it's bad for your teeth, it's as bad for your teeth as crystal meth or crack. That's according to one study anyway, which found that excessive consumption of soda, even diet soda, with its good for you but ever so poison aspartame, can rot your choppers as badly as ingesting two of the worst, most dangerous narcotics on earth. The good news is it likely takes far more soda than the amount consumed by a normal human being to achieve the same level of uh, crack or meth destruction. That's not really good news. I mean, <laughs> let's face it, it's really not. Um, it, it, it rots your teeth out, but if you don't, you know, do it all the time, it won't be as bad. You only lose five teeth instead of all of them. The meth user, however, also consumed two or three cans of regular soda, so he doubled down on his uh, destruction. Soda advocates say that the study is flawed and that comparing soda to illegal drugs is unfair and irresponsible. The woman referred to in this article, it says, did not receive dental services for more than 20 years. That's two-thirds of her life. Well... If she had received dental care, they would have masked it. So let me say this, according to the, the, the pop advocate's own words. If you have dental care, then you'll be like a crackhead or a meth head that has really good insurance. Congratulations! In other words, if you want to keep your teeth in your head, put down the pop can! You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Please donate to the show if you can. I'm trying to go to the Kokesh March, and to do so, I'm going to need you donating to me, because it's going to be an expensive jaunt. Thank you for listening. Make sure you go to the Media Speaks, look at the articles by Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Also, friends, if you have a chance to do so, make sure that you thank a vet. It's Memorial Day. Well, for those of you that have my hours, it is. Technically, it ended about four and a half hours ago. But my point is, a lot of people sacrificed a whole lot for you to be here. So remember their sacrifice, friends. And thank you so much for listening to The Correct Views. Good night, friends. God bless.